Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about designing a release strategy. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this AZ400 Azure DevOps Engineer Expert Certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's start with understanding what is traditional IT. A few years ago, IT was a facilitating department. IT was there to support the business users. And because time had proven that developed software that had bad quality by default, software changes were a risk. The resolution for this quality problem was to keep changes under strict control. The department that became responsible for controlling the changes became the IT Pro department. In the past, but also today, the IT Pro department is responsible for the stability of the systems, while the development department is responsible for creating new value. So let's understand what is a silo-based development. Long release cycles, a lot of testing, code freezes, night and weekend work and a lot of work involved ensure that everything works. But the more we change, the more risk it entails. Let us have a look at the silo-based development. If you look at this picture of traditional silo-based value stream, we see bugs and unplanned work necessary updates or support work and planned value-adding work all added to the backlog of the teams. When everything is planned and the first gate can be opened, everything drops to the next phase. All the work and thus all the value move in piles to the next phase. It moves from plan phase to a realized phase where all the work is developed, tested and documented. And from here, it moves to the release phase. All the value is released at the same time. As a result, the release takes a long time. Now let's look into how you can integrate continuous delivery into this. Now the new scenario is we need to deliver fast and the product we make must be good. And we should do this with our software production being cheap and quality being high. To achieve this, we need something like continuous delivery. We need to move toward a situation where the value is not piled up and released all at once, but where values flow through a pipeline. Just like in this example, a piece of work is like a marble and only one piece of work can flow through the pipeline at once. So work has to be prioritized in the right way. So as you can see, the pipeline has green and red outlets. These are the feedback loops or quality gates that we want to have in the place. And the feedback loop can have different things. A unit test to validate the code, an automated build to validate the sources, an automated test on a test environment, some monitor on a server, usage instrumentation in the code. So now let's understand what is continuous delivery. Continuous delivery or CD is a set of processes, tools and techniques for the rapid, reliable and continuous development and delivery of software. This means that continuous delivery goes beyond the release of software through a pipeline. To understand this bit more, look at the eight principles of continuous delivery. The first one is the process of releasing and deploying software must be repeatable and reliable. Another principle is automate everything. Then if something is difficult or painful, do it more often and keep everything in source control. And done means released. Another principle is build quality in. And everybody has responsibility for the release process. And finally, improve continuously. And one of the essential steps in moving software more quickly to production is by changing the way we deliver the software to production. In our industry, it is a widespread that we have teams that need to do overtime in the weekend to install and release new software. This is mainly caused by the fact that we have two parts of the release process bolted together. The moment we deploy the new software, we also release new features to the end users. The best way to move your software to production safely while maintaining stability is by separating these two concerns. So we separate deployments from our release. 
This can also be phrased as separating your functional release from your technical release. Let's look into release and release processes. We start with defining a release process or release pipeline. The release pipeline contains all the steps that you walk through when you move your artifact. The stages can be a development stage, a test stage, or production stage, or just a stage where a specific user can access the application. The release itself is something different. The release is an instance of a release pipeline. You can compare it with object inheritance. In object orientation, a class contains the blueprint of definition of an object, but the object itself is an instance of that blueprint. So how do you measure the quality of the release process? The quality of your release process cannot be measured directly because it is a process. So what can you measure is how good your process work. So if your release process constantly changes, this might be an indication that there is something wrong in the process. If your release constantly fail and you constantly have to update your release process to make it work, it might also be an indication that something is wrong with the release process. So what can you do to keep track of your release process quality? This is by creating visualizations about the quality of all the release following that the same release process or release pipeline. For example, adding a dashboard widget which allows you to show you the status of every release. That concludes this episode. We're going to look into module 9, Knowledge Check. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.